The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. In this video, we're gonna see how to use two different types of piezoelectric buzzers. When connected to the Arduino, they can be programmed to act as an alarm, as a notification when a motion sensor is triggered, or when a sensor reaches a certain value. You can also program them to produce musical notes. There are two types of buzzers you can connect to the Arduino, active buzzers and passive buzzers. They look almost identical. Active buzzers are called active because they only need a constant DC voltage to produce sound. Passive buzzers need an oscillating AC voltage to produce sound. An easy way to tell if you have an active buzzer or a passive buzzer is to connect it to a DC voltage source like a 9 volt battery. The buzzers are polarized, so check which terminal is positive and which terminal is negative before you connect it to the battery. One of these is an active buzzer and one is a passive buzzer. Let's find out which one is which. Hear that little clicking noise? That's the sound a passive buzzer makes when it has a constant voltage applied to it. Let's try the other buzzer. So that's the sound the active buzzer makes. Active buzzers only need a constant voltage to produce sound. That's because they have an oscillator chip inside that converts the constant voltage to an oscillating voltage. Active and passive buzzers are types of magnetic buzzers. Inside the buzzer, there's a coil of wire that's connected to the buzzer's pins. There's also a round magnet that surrounds the wire coil. This is a thin metal film with a metal weight attached to the top. When pulses of current are applied to the coil, magnetic inductance causes the metal weight to vibrate up and down. That up and down motion moves the metal film very quickly and produces vibrations in the air, which are detected by humans as sound. Active buzzers are easier to program, so let's start with that first. Then we'll look at how to program passive buzzers. Let's build a circuit that controls an active buzzer with the press of a button. After we learn how to set up sensors in the next section, you should be able to replace the input from a button with the reading from a sensor. You can connect the positive terminal of the active buzzer to any digital pin. Here I've connected it to digital pin 8. The negative terminal of the buzzer connects to the Arduino's ground pin. Then one side of a push button connects to digital pin 7, and the other side of the button to the other ground pin. Active buzzers are programmed just like LEDs. You write the digital pin high to turn it on, and low to turn it off. So up here, I declare the two pin variables. One called buzzer pin, set equal to Arduino pin 8, and another called button pin, set equal to pin 7. 
In the setup section, I set the buzzer pin as an output and the button pin as an input with the internal pull-up resistor. Then in the loop, we take a digital read of the button pin and store the value in a local variable called button state. Then we have a couple if statements. If the button state is low, which happens when the button is pressed, the Arduino will digital write the buzzer pin high, and the buzzer will produce a sound. If the button state is high, which will happen when the button isn't being pressed, the Arduino will digital write the buzzer pin low, and no sound will come out of the buzzer. And that's about it. Here's the active buzzer circuit connected up. Every time I press the button, the buzzer makes a sound. All right, now let's look at passive buzzers. One advantage of passive buzzers over active buzzers is that you can control the tone or pitch of the sound. With active buzzers, only one tone is possible. Passive buzzers need a square wave signal to produce sound. And by changing the frequency of that square wave, you can change the pitch of the buzzer sound. The Arduino has a built-in function that generates square waves at a range of frequencies. It's called the tone function. The tone function generates a square wave with a 50% duty cycle at a frequency that you specify. It takes three parameters. The pin number you want to send the square wave to, the frequency of the tone in hertz, and optionally, the duration of the tone in milliseconds. The no tone function can be used to turn off the tone function. Let's build a circuit that cycles through a set of musical notes. In this circuit, we connect the positive terminal of a passive buzzer to digital pin 8, and the negative terminal to ground. In the sketch, we declare a buzzer pin variable and set it equal to pin 8. Then we set the buzzer pin as an output. Now, say I want to have a tone sound when the sketch starts up for the first time. If you put the tone function in the setup section, that tone will only be played once when the sketch starts up. So this will make a 1000 Hz, 200 millisecond long tone at startup. So here in the loop, I'm gonna cycle through a scale of seven musical notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. I found the exact frequency of each note online. There are seven notes, so we need seven tone functions. Each one has the first parameter set to output at the buzzer pin. The second parameter is the frequency in Hertz. We're not gonna use the third parameter, duration here. The duration parameter doesn't work very well when the tone function is used in the loop. To set the tone duration in the loop, you have to use the delay function. So after each tone function, I have a delay of one second. The A4 note is 440 Hertz, so I have 440 as the second parameter here. For B4, I have 494 hertz, C4 is 523, and so on, all the way up to G4. At the end of the loop, I use the no tone function and a delay of 1000 milliseconds to add a one second period of silence before the loop repeats. So let's check this out. and now it's cycling through the seven notes. With a passive buzzer, you have more control over the sound than with active buzzers. In the next video, we're gonna continue on with our look at Arduino outputs and see how to use seven segment displays to print numbers and the readings from a temperature sensor.
SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.